Hey everybody, this is Pete Wenzel and today I'm going to introduce my new Blender tutorial series. I want to show you how to get from creating a mesh to generating cool looking camera movements in our scene. This will be totally step by step, so every end of a video will be the beginning of the next one. As always, I will talk about bricks, but with the workflows I'm going to use, you can create much more than just brick stuff. So if you are interested in some in-detail information for creating such beautiful looking scenes, make sure to subscribe to not miss any of my upcoming videos. Let's dive into the first part where I'm going to show you how to create a realistic looking brick mesh in Blender based on the LeoCAD export. Creating the material will not be part of this video. If you're interested in the material topic, check out my linked video. The fastest way to get all bricks into Blender is to download LeoCAD, then drag and drop all items you need and export them via file export and choose Wavefront. LeoCAD is a free 3D software with a huge LEGO brick library and I will put a download link into the video's description. Go to Blender, File, Import, Wavefront and then choose your file. And you may realize that it is way too big and laying on the side. Therefore we are going to rotate it and scale it a little bit down. After that we apply all transformations to define this now as our default size and rotation of the object. And this is done via object apply all transforms. To achieve really good render results we have to adjust the mesh and optimize it for Blender. Keep in mind we would like to use thousand of these bricks for our landscape. To reduce the total amount of vertices we remove the inside of the brick which we are not going to see. To clean up the mesh we should remove all vertices which are either not connected to any other ones or double. We do this by selecting all vertices in edit mode and go to mesh, clean up, delete loose. Next step is to remove double vertices. Same here, select all and go to mesh, clean up, merge by distance. Blender is better in handling shapes consist of faces with four edges than faces with three edges. To adjust this we change the selection method from vertex to face and convert triangles to squares via face, trees to quads. Sometimes you have to adjust some faces by hand. You can do this by selecting the two ones and press F to merge them. As a last step you should recalculate the normals to ensure all faces have the same orientation by clicking Mesh, Normals and Recalculate Outside. Currently all faces are shaded flat, but especially the cylinder jacket of the stud should be shaded smooth. For this reason we select all faces which should be shaded smooth and select Face, Shade Smooth. Now the shading is smooth, but the edges are way too sharp for a realistic brick. To fix this we add a bevel modifier. Now we should take care of three options to get it look right. First we increase the amount of segments to get a round edge. Second we adjust the width to get to our preferred result. And third, nobody likes to bevel a cylinder part of the stud. It looks so horrible, we have to fix it. Now we have a look on limit method and width method. First we play a little bit with width method and we found out that depth looks pretty cool. This is our first solution, but there is a second one which gives you more control and I prefer this. Disable the width method and set the limit method to angle. The angle limitation is the threshold and now only edges with an angle above a defined value will be beveled. Nevertheless, what you do, our cylinder is not beveled anymore. If you like this video, share it with your friends, give me a thumb up 
and feel free to ask further questions in the comments below. If you don't want to miss any of my upcoming videos, make sure to subscribe to my channel. At the moment the stud looks too low poly. So we are glad that there is a modifier in Blender to add more detail to his shape. It's called subdivision surface and let's go and add it. It starts looking better, but not perfect. Now you can increase the amount of subdivisions for the viewport until you get the result you like. Ensure the render value is at least as high as the viewport value. Otherwise it will look better in the viewport than in the final rendering, which might be a little bit pointless. The shape of the brick looks pretty cool right now, but the total amount of vertices and faces would kill my performance if I'm going to duplicate this stone about a thousand times. So we have to disable the visualization of the modifiers in the viewport. To do this just click on the little displays. As we do so the total amount of vertices and faces in this scene will be reduced dramatically. By now the object creation is done. But keep in mind you might create more different bricks and append them from or to another Blender project. Therefore it would be a great idea to go to the context bar and set a name at the object tab. This is now brick underline 2 by 2 Using this workflow you can create all bricks with a clean good looking mesh, which is not going to kill your performance when using a huge amount of them. That's it, we have a clean brick mesh and that would be the end of this tutorial. In the next video I will show you how to set up a particle system to create a huge brick built surface. Now you have reached the end of this video. But this doesn't mean you have to talk to real people. You may be interested in my new video over there. Or you could watch this recommended video. And as a last opportunity there are many more videos for you at my channel.